Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Advent, December 6, 2020. Last week our radio broadcast was out during a portion of the announcement, so I want to say a belated thanks to Karen and Paul Caswell, who gave altar flowers to the glory of God and in honor of their grandchildren, Katie, Ben, and Jilly's December birthdays. Thanks, Karen and Paul, and sorry about that transmission glitch. Today's radio broadcast and altar flowers are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Donald and Audrey Anderson by their daughter Karen and granddaughters Sarah and Hannah. May your memories be of comfort to you this day. Thank you so much, Anderson family, for supporting these important ministries. We extend our sympathies to quite a number of Bethany's friends and families this week. Tom Casperson, former Michigan State representative and senator, died on November 29th after battling lung cancer. 12-year-old Mason Kabasik died tragically on November 29th when his bicycle was hit while he was riding in the Ford River area. We extend sympathies to Elizabeth and Jim Moberg, who have had a loss on both sides of their family. Elizabeth's brother-in-law, Ted Lawford, died unexpectedly of a heart attack on Tuesday, December 1st. And after a long illness, Jim's brother, John Moberg, passed away on November 23rd. Beverly Plourd's brother-in-law, Norman Plourd, passed away on November 29th. David Johnson, brother of Randy and Debbie Johnson, died on November 21st after a long illness. And Kenneth Barassa, Jean Barassa's brother-in-law, died on November 18th. Our hearts go out to all who are experiencing the loss of a loved one. May the Casperson, Kabasik, Moberg, Plurd, Johnson and Barassa families and friends find peace and hope in the resurrection promise. We share joy with one of our Bethany members who is celebrating a birthday this coming week. Virginia Claremont will turn 80 years old on Friday, December 11th. Congratulations, Ginger. We wish you birthday blessings and a wonderful year to come. One other piece of good news, if all goes according to plan, Bill Van Effen is going to be released from his rehabilitation hospital in Grand Rapids this coming Wednesday, and he's coming home. Bill's friends and family have been doing work on recreating Bill's home environment in Rock to make it accessible when he returns. So if anyone would like the information relative to funds being raised to assist the family, or if you'd like to send a card, please call the church office. Bill continues to appreciate everyone's love and support. We are going to honor next Sunday, December 13th, as Commitment Sunday and New Member Sunday. We appreciate that quite a number of people have turned in 2021 pledge cards, which are so helpful in planning our ministries for the year ahead. Remember, it's never too late to turn in a commitment card. We also have a number of people interested in becoming members of Bethany, and next week we will do this virtually. We can't have a welcome luncheon, but maybe we'll be able to do this sometime in 2021. In the meantime, we'll let you know who our new members are next week, and if you'd like to help me extend a warm welcome, just let me know. We want to thank everyone who helped out with Christmas decorating last Monday. Carol Buttrin, Karen Caswell, Dan Johnson, 
Steve Lindahl, along with Dave Moran and Jean Sauter. It's looking so nice in our sanctuary and Circle Drive and outside. Different this year, but still lovely. You'll notice that our manger scene is now on the scene. This Sunday, we've got the animals in the creche. In Jesus' time, this is where the animals are hanging out a few weeks before Christmas. Each week in Advent, we'll add to the manger scene as a reminder that we are preparing for the Christ child. Jesus hasn't yet arrived. Thanks to everyone who has picked up angels from our angel tree. There are still angels to pick up in the Circle Drive entrance. If you'd like to participate, but you're not liking the idea of shopping this year, no worries, we've got you covered. Just leave your angel in the basket along with your name and budget, and the youth ministry kids will take care of the shopping for you. It's a wonderful ministry, so please consider participating in Operation Christmas Smile with Bethany's kids. They're looking to have everything wrapped up a week from tomorrow, December 14th. And the mitten and hat tree is looking great, both homemade and purchased knitwear. Another wonderful way this to help out our school kids. So when you're shopping, feel free to pick up a hat or mittens and bring them on by. This coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we will have our second of three Advent Zoom sessions as we watch, wait, and listen together. Sounds like there were nearly 40 people last week, but there's plenty of room for more. If you'd like to participate, just send me an email so I can get you the link. Personally, I found last week that attending this 40-minute session was a really nice way to slow down, to pause, and prepare myself for the advent of Christ. In your bulletin today and the December newsletter, you will find important information about Christmas Eve memorials and honorariums, the when and how of our Advent and Christmas services, and where our Christmas offering will go this year. So please check out the details. There are some deadlines you're going to want to note. Finally, thank you radio listeners for being with us today, either on AM 600 or FM 93.5. And thank you, viewers, who are joining us on Facebook Live or later on YouTube. We appreciate all who are helping out with today's worship service. Our musicians, John Beck and Kim Beck. Our organist, Paul Ryla. Kyra Beck, who is running our live stream. And Sarah Beck, who is serving as our assisting minister. My name is Pastor Terry Frankenstein, and we will begin this morning by sharing a prayer and lighting the second candle on our Advent wreath. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. As we light two candles, let us sing the first two verses of Come Now, O Prince of Peace. Yes. 
Let us continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in singing our gathering song, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God. 
worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God. God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. This morning we read responsively Psalm 85, beginning with the first verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. 
I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. A reading from 2 Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I bring you grace and peace and mercy from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Out in the wilderness, the prophet John is preaching the word of God that has come to him. God has chosen this itinerant preacher, this totally uncivilized man that Mark tells us is dressed in camel's hair and is eating wild locusts with honey. John is a 20-something-year-old man who lives in a wasteland, a place of chaos and disorder where robbers lurk and ferocious animals kill their prey. And he's preaching to people who dare to venture out from the city of Jerusalem and the surrounding Judean countryside. The Lord hasn't picked someone who is wealthy, dressed in fine clothes and living in a palace to deliver God's message. 
with the unlikely figure of John preaching in the wilderness. As he begins, John the Baptist repeats words from our first reading in Isaiah chapter 40. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. He is setting right the path, the road for the Lord, making the Lord's journey possible. He is preparing. In quoting 2nd Isaiah, he's reminding his followers about a section of the Hebrew Bible written centuries earlier, a time when their forefathers and foremothers had been hauled off by Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian ruler. Their possessions had been taken from them, their nation defeated, and their holy city, Jerusalem, destroyed. This dreadful period in their history had been a time of judgment and downfall, an era that the people of John's time have not forgotten, even 500 years later. John is reminding the people that back then, Isaiah was actually expressing hope. God was acting to free the people. God was showing them grace, and preparing them for a return from Babylonian exile. And the people following John into the wilderness know this centuries-old story. It's familiar. Yet in their time and place, it takes on a new meaning. The Baptist is restating the text for their situation in these early days of the first century. As people living in Judea, they aren't dealing with the Babylonians anymore, but with the Roman Empire. People in John's time are encountering issues of power and control over their land. They're facing overwhelming debt and excessive taxes, leaving most of the citizens powerless and in a struggle to survive. They not only have to face Roman political domination, but their religious leadership, the priests and rabbis and scribes, are part of a system of power and privilege that excludes 80 to 90 percent of the population. There are enormous differences in wealth and power between the elite and the non-elite in Judea. Yet, through John, a faithful God is again sending a word of hope, announcing the coming of the long-awaited Lord and the need to prepare the way. People flock to the Baptist to hear that the Lord is coming, not just for the rich and powerful, but for all. Out in the wilderness, John begins by proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Verse 4 of our reading is quite the phrase, isn't it? Proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. What does this even mean? How might people in our time, how might we begin to understand a prophet like John? The scholars tell us that John is asking people to change their hearts, to get ready for something completely new and unexpected and different, something that is going to be available not just for the priests and for the wealthy, not just a select few, but for all people, including the poor and powerless. Something new is going to happen, and that is... The Lord and Messiah is coming. And John uses this familiar Isaiah text to help people understand such wonderful words of hope. And today, once again, in these weeks before Christmas, we get to hear them too. These are words of hope that I dare to say we are aching to hear. Our issues are very different from the ones in Scripture, but they are real, and they are very painful. As a nation and as a world community, our hearts break over COVID-19, 
It's emotional, personal, and financial devastation. At the same time, we continue dealing with devastation from wildfires, from hurricanes that occurred this year. There continue to be millions starving due to severe drought and famine. We are disheartened by acts of hatred. And we know that locally, the effects of drug abuse contribute to poverty with children as victims. Globally, nationally, and locally, we need the Lord to come to us and to act in the midst of our new reality, one far removed from the simplicity and innocence many of us felt just a few short decades ago. There is a new norm, one where we really don't know what will be next in the latest breaking news. We are a people in need of hopeful words this Advent season as we prepare for and anticipate Christ's arrival. The real temptation now, as it has been for a long time, is to close ourselves off to what is happening because we feel helpless. But we know better. As Lutheran Christians, we know that we can make the choice to stay in the world and work within it to do something. But what's tough is finding the strength and determination as well as discerning the correct direction, especially now. I believe our hope is in asking God to change our heart. Or as John the Baptist would say, it is to repent, reorient ourselves and our lives to God, to what God desires for creation, this world and all who live within it. When we do so, when we have a change in heart so our focus is on God's will, we cannot ignore what is going on in our immediate surroundings as well as the world. We cannot shut down. Yet finding the strength to do this on our own, by our own will, is this even possible? I would say no, it is not. From where does it come? Our strength comes from God, who will help us reorient, who will open our hearts. Our strength comes from hope in the Christ child who is to come, whose birth we will celebrate in a few short weeks. Our strength is through our faith in Christ who has come with his incredible life and with the gift of his death and resurrection, granting us forgiveness of sins, forgiveness for you and for me. And our strength rests in the belief that Christ will come again. God's love will soften our hearts when our hearts are hardened to life's realities. And God will help us turn away from our inward focus to take action. Maybe we can't resolve the big problems, but we can make a difference in small ways ways that are meaningful to those whose lives we are able to impact, individually and as a congregation. We know what these things are. There are many incredibly easy ways to make a difference. and We just need to keep them on our radar. God will be alongside us, in our midst, working to change our hearts. God has been acting in this world for centuries. The way was prepared for the exiled Israelites to go home. The way was prepared for the arrival of Jesus. And now we can prepare for the Christ child. In this season of Advent, let us keep from turning inward and shutting out the world. Let us prepare for a change in our own hearts for deep, holy longing as we wait for the Christ child. 
the one who is to come, the one who has come, and the one who will come again. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of the day, Comfort, Comfort Now, My People. Let us together profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from, the, from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray especially for Eritrean refugees who have fled to Ethiopia and Sudan. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, make even the disparities between your people, sustain and, su su sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities, accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, tend those who are sick or struggling with depression, and gather all people in your healing embrace. We pray especially today for all affected by cases of COVID in our area, our shut-in, and those in hospitals and nursing homes who are unable to be visited by family and friends. Heal and nourish all in need, especially Barbara Anderson, John Pinar, Lois Pinar, Mary Beaver, Alice Jones, Lloyd Jensen, Bill Van Effen, Elaine Peterson, Pastor Dave Van Clay, Terry DePlante, Sandy Anderson, Sandy Flynn, those who are listed in the bulletin and those we name before you now, either aloud or in this moment of silence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Especially today, we remember Tom Casperson, Mason Kvasik, Ted Laufer, John Moberg, Norman Plurd, David Johnson, and Kenneth Barassa. Make their lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Receive this blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is, He Came Down. that we may have love he came down that we may have love he came down that we may have love hallelujah forevermore he came down that we may have love he came down that came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Be to God.